and then the front lobby but we also have our e-giving and this is again our two QR codes that are there one is for the general fund and then the other one is for our missions fund and when you give and ask that you put simply the code EN1 in the descriptor so that they would know that it is from the English service okay so those are the two most important things administratively that we got to handle for the service so let us now prepare our hearts as we come to worship the Lord all of us come from different situations from home from wherever else maybe we some of us rushed to the market to get the freshest fish ever still jumping <laughs> but it's now time for us to prepare to worship the Lord as we come into the presence of God there is a sense of reverence and all that we want to prepare for those of us who are serving and as leaders we are here there are many things that we need to take care of but there's only one thing needful this morning that is to come to worship the Lord if it helps you to close your eyes to block out a few things that's in your mind just do so when service begins I want you to recognize that we do it as a body of Christ community but this couple of minutes we have before service begins would you prepare your heart to worship the Lord greet you in the first on this first Sunday of Advent in this new calendar with great anticipation of he who comes in the name of the Lord you know Joseph had a dream and God made a way for the light of the world Joseph and Mary gave their trust and God restores a broken people a child is born the world will never be the same again together let us watch together let us wait jesus is coming i want to invite sharon to come 
Every week, we would light a candle in anticipation of Christmas, the day that the Lord is born. We do this in anticipation, trying to build up our anticipation, trying to cause us to recognize and realize that Whoa, what a significant event. The basis of all that we believe in happened 2,000 years ago. We who are so far away, we do this in remembrance, in trying again to set our hearts right. There is a portion for the congregation to read, and I ask that you will respond to the reading that is in bold. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad, together, we are glad whether we walk in or were brought out, brought in, whether we logged on or tuned in. We are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can hope in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's way, and that we may walk in God's path. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Sharon. Shall we all stand together? The call to worship would be respond. May the joy of the Advent season with its message of mighty hope be with you all. We begin Advent by celebrating the, the expectation that the Christ who came, who comes again to be with us in every age and every place, and who will come again in a glorious finality to consummate the healing work which he began at Bethlehem. We shall judge between nations and arbitrate between many races. They shall beat the swords into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not rise up from the nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Yes, a voice is calling. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Let's praise our God and sing a song and worship our God. Hope for the nation. Hope of the nation.
Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness, Jesus, truth in His circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In His you live and die, You broke the chain, You rose to life. You are the hope living in us. You are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear, our priest of peace, drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all who will receive. You are the hope. You are the hope, living in us. You are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining the world, the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace, drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all who will receive. Lord, we believe, Lord, we believe, Lord, we believe, Lord, we believe. Christ looks glory fills the skies Christ the everlasting life Son of righteousness arise and triumph this chains of mine Come thou Lord Waited one in the fullness of your love and food is comes my shame, and I will never be the same. So here I wait in hope of you, my my soul strong. They spring from on high and they star in my heart appear. Dark and chill, this is the moon until your love. And joyless is the evening song Until Emmanuel has come So here I wait in hope of you All my souls longing and true They spring from on my feet And they start in my heart appears, so here I wait in hope of you. All my souls long is true and true. They spring from on my deep, and they star in my heart appears. 
as we wait on Jesus, we know that we have a fairest Lord Jesus, who is ruler of all nature. Let's sing this song. Savior. Oh, 
Could have just spoken the word and somehow you expect all of creation to love you but God you didn't do that this season Lord we anticipate the love of God being made man fully man going through every single pain every grief every hurt just so that we will understand, possibly understand that God loves us. 
thank you, Lord, for loving us. And Lord, we want to love you in return. We want to lift your name and exalt you. But God, it is not just being God, though we worship you because of that, but also sacrificing, taking the path revealing to us that we would know who God is. So God, as we come into your temple, as we come into your presence, as we worship you, Lord, God, this is our prayer that we would walk with you, Lord, because love is just a word that until love becomes action as what you have shown us, until love becomes something that is being done. Lord, it's just words, it's just talk, it's just emotion. But Lord, from there, you express to us, from the words of Scripture, from the re revelation of creation, you showed us what love is. And this is how we know what love is when we look at the cross. So Father, in response to your revealing love to us. We want to walk in your ways. We want to determine to take the path to follow after you. As your call is for us as disciples, that God coming together as a, as a community of people is not just for fun, though it is, and we love the family, we love the community, but it is also to walk clear, circumspectly, Lord, before you. Help us, Lord. Let us pray this prayer that is on the slide. Father, we thank you for reminding us today that it is your intention to establish relationship with people. When we follow your laws, we are blessed and will not go astray. When we do not know what to do because everything has become like a weight upon our shoulders, you extend your hands to offer help. This is the message of Advent, our hope and encouragement. Amen. And may I invite you to your seats as we just push a little bit more in prayer this morning. God, we want to thank you for what you have done and what you are doing in us and around us. We thank you for the kindergarten that, you, Lord, you have guided and allowed the, the graduation to go on and Lord, we are thankful for how the kindergarten is as a beacon of light, a testimony to the people around, to the parents, to the students of who you are, that you are a great God. So God, we, th we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this particular opportunity given to us as Bukit Panjang Methodist Church to reach out, touch. I pray, God, that more of us will volunteer to be part of, to see Bukit Panjang Methodist Church Kindergarten as a fishing pool so that we are able to go speak of the love of God. Lord, we thank you for the LCC retreat that, was, that happened yesterday and today as we continue. We thank you for your presence, Lord, that you guided us, you watched us. We thank you for the relations made and the relationships made and, and deepened, Lord. You are a good God. That God, as you lead us, Lord, you are such a good God to us. Lord, we pray for this season. And I pray this morning and we've been focusing on this new season of Advent. I pray, Father, for all of us that the significance of this season would really catch us in our hearts and our spirit. That God, again, the expression of love in the form of Jesus Christ, fully man, fully God who did not regard equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself. Lord, Lord, cause us to respond, Lord, to you. Cause us, Lord, to love you beyond words, mind, will, spirit, Lord. Cause us to love you with all our hearts, mind, strength, soul. And cause us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we continue to lift the world before you, a world that is crying out to you. 
Lord, we are not in a refuge, in a tower that, Lord, we do not know what's going on in the world. But we pray that as we reach out to the people around us, cause us, Lord, to leave this sanctuary, to reach out to the people around us, to touch, to minister, to bring the word, to bring the love of God. Help us, Lord. We pray for the world, not, in a, not, not in a, from a distance, but, Lord, the world that we are involved in, my neighbours, my, my colleagues, my schoolmates. Lord, we pray that we will learn to love the world, the people who need Christ. Lord, we lift before you, see, as she preaches, Lord, this morning. Use the words spoken. Holy Spirit, we pray, as you have moved us in worship and song, as you moved us, Lord, in worship and prayer now, Lord, would you move us also worship in the word so that the word spoken would draw also a response so that we can love you more. We ask this, Lord, because you are our God and there is none other. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. I'm reading from the NIV translation. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountains of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? God of love and power, you reveal yourself to us in your word and accounts of prophecy and fulfillment that points us to Jesus Christ. Lead us in your truth and teach us now as we hear your word proclaimed that we may open our hearts to Christ and yearn for his coming in glory and serve him with joy. Amen. Have you ever heard of the phrase, religion is a crutch for the weak? Can I have my PowerPoint slide? Okay. So some believe that religion is just a human construct that people turn to rely on because they are too weak and cannot cope with life on their own. You can't find purpose and direction in your life? Here's religion to give you a goal. You can't find a solution to your problems? Here's religion to let you seek help from a higher being. Is religion simply wishful thinking to help people deal with their problems? It is true that in our world today, there seems to be no relief from our problems. They seem to come one after another. I felt this way, especially since the pandemic started. Every day when I read the news, it just gets worse and worse. First, it was news about the gravity about the COVID situation in Wuhan to reports of healthcare systems around the world being overwhelmed. And then doctors, they have to choose who gets the ventilator and essentially who they should save. Elderly dying alone in the hospitals. Countries needing mass graves for a number of COVID deaths. And COVID itself was really bad already. And just when I thought things couldn't get worse, it does. When the economy is already hard hit by the pandemic, it's compounded by unrelenting disasters brought about by climate change. And as if things couldn't get any worse, war breaks out in Ukraine. 
In today's passage, Isaiah paints a very uh, vision that he received from God that is so vastly different. In this vision that he presents to Israel, people will go to seek God on how to live rather than every man for himself. Nations will go to God to settle disputes rather than take things into their own hands. There will no longer be training, people training for war. No more NS, no more nuclear tests, really. As far as we know of human civilization, there have always been battles and wars. How is it possible? Is this passage also just a crutch for us to believe what we hope to be true when there's actually no hope for change? Is there any evidence that what we are reading is more than just wishful thinking on our part? How do I know whether the faith that I have is blind faith or whether the hope that I have is a false hope? So let's examine this a little bit more and see what makes faith true faith and not blind faith. Do you know of anyone around you who says, I won't believe anything unless it's scientifically proven? People who believe that as long as there's research to back it up, it can't go wrong. But yet, anyone who has done research or studied stats, statistics, know that there's always a degree of uncertainty and a margin of error. So while not 100% of the results they collect will be in line with their thesis, but there's enough for us to conclude that there's a clear pattern. And there's enough evidence for us to assume this as true and make life decisions based on this result. So if you don't understand this, it's okay. I'm glad you don't have to go through this pain. But okay, maybe not pain. So maybe some people really enjoy. <laughs> but put another way, okay, basically this is what most of us are doing when the pandemic started. You know, when we took vaccines or when we take any PCR or ART test, you know, there's no 100% certainty that you will not get COVID if you get the vaccine. There's no 100% certainty that you are COVID negative if you have a negative test result. So even though there's no 100% uh, certainty that I won't get COVID if I'm vaccinated, but I do have certain hope that the chances of infection are lower. And even if I'm infected, I have faith and certain hope that if I'm vaccinated, there are enough stories and real evidence of people who are vaccinated who recover easily at home. So therefore, actually, almost anything that we do in life requires us to look at the evidence we have and decide whether to stake our lives on it or not. So when Isaiah gave this vision in our passage today as a promise from God to Israel, God had already given them evidence that he was already fulfilling it. God doesn't expect blind faith from the Israelites. He gives to them along with his promise evidence so that they can have greater confidence and continue to stake their lives on this promise. The vision in Isaiah recalls the promise given to their ancestor Abraham in Genesis 12. God promised Abraham that he will make Abraham into a great nation and all peoples, every nation on earth will be blessed through Abraham. When Isaiah says, God of Jacob, it reminds the Israelites of God's promise to Jacob as well. God's promise to Jacob was, do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you a great nation there. True enough, this was how Israel was birthed as a people, as a nation. They grew and multiplied in numbers in Egypt, and God brought them out and saved them from slavery under them. So Israel have already seen for themselves, they have evidence of how God has made them a nation since. They have evidence of how God has been fulfilling this promise to them. And having already seen how God has been at work, the Israelites are then called to be certain in this hope, this vision and promise given through Isaiah and to stake their lives on it. Today, this promise is still being fulfilled and awaiting fulfillment. In the last days, it says in verse 2, while it can, it doesn't necessarily mean the end of time. It simply means the days afterwards to come, leading up until the end of something. And in the context of Isaiah, 
God promises that we'll be seeing this vision come true all the way until the judgment and the redemption of God's people is complete, which we know will happen when Christ comes again. Therefore, this promise in Isaiah is also for us. And similarly for us, God also does not expect us to hope in the fulfillment of this promise without any evidence of it coming to fruition. So in this passage, God wants us to come to Him and experience the fulfillment of His promise. This is our central truth today, that God wants us to come to Him and experience the fulfillment of His promise. We are starting a new year in the Christian calendar today with the season of Advent during which we anticipate the coming of Christ with expectancy. And in this time of waiting, God offers us hope in our waiting when we come to Him. As we continue practicing CPR again in this new year, and as we do so, let's remember that we reach out to others because God reached out to us first. And hence, this is the focus of our Advent this year. God first reached out to us to cultivate relationship with us. And all that we do, even in our own CPR efforts, is a response to the hope that He has given us. From today's passage, God is reaching out to us. God wants us to come to Him and experience the fulfillment of His promise. He is calling us to have confidence in Him, through the evidence that He gives us, and to be part of this promise by staking our lives on it. We'll go on to look how God has been fulfilling this promise already, and more importantly, how we are part of this promise in Isaiah. So first, God's promise to us in Isaiah is His promise to dwell with men. Many ancient religions, they saw mountains as the homes of God. So mountain of the Lord is where God has come to dwell with his people. God's promise here is that he will make his home among us. So how has God been fulfilling this promise already? We can see that this was evident through Jesus. That Jesus was God incarnate coming to live and dwell among men. All the Gospels, the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John documented this with plenty of eyewitness accounts cited in their, um, in their writings. The mountain where God dwells will be the highest among others, which means that God will triumph over all other gods and powers. And this was also fulfilled in Christ. Even demons obey and fear Jesus because of the authority he has over them. And after Jesus ascended to heaven, we continue to see God's promise that he will dwell with men being fulfilled through the Holy Spirit. Those who place their faith in Christ, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to dwell with them until he comes again. In 2 Corinthians, it says, He anointed us, he set us apart, marked us as people who belong to him, and put the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a deposit. I think most of you know how deposits work, yeah? If you want to buy something, you pay a certain amount first to just mark it as yours, and at a later time, you pay in full and take it home. So the Holy Spirit is given to us as a deposit to mark that we are God's people, and the Holy Spirit who lives in us is greater than any other spirit. No one else, no evil can take you. To put this in a childish and Singaporean way, so sometimes if I'm eating an ice cream and I really don't want like my siblings to take it because I know they will bite off half my ice cream, so what I do is I just lick around the whole ice cream to just choke this as mine. Okay, I make it very disgusting. I know it's very childish, but I need to protect my ice cream, okay? So, okay, sorry, I didn't mean to use such a disgusting illustration, but the saliva on the ice cream, okay, is like the Holy Spirit with us, you know, protecting us from being taken away until Christ comes to take us for himself. So, yes, do we, do we have the evidence of the Holy Spirit dwelling in men? Yes, we have evidence. 
We've seen it happen in dramatic ways in the book of Acts, where believers burst out in tongues. And I believe it was necessary then for the Jews and Israelites to see that the same Holy Spirit they have received, people from other nations have received it too. And people of other nations have also been marked as God's people. I believe it was necessary for them. But since then, in the letters of Paul, we read that not all have the gift of tongues. So the Holy Spirit's indwelling, sorry, yeah, this one. So the Holy Spirit's indwelling does come in quieter, less dramatic ways also. So John Wesley, um, yeah, the founder of Methodism, at Elder's Gate, he personally experienced the Holy Spirit's indwelling at his Elder's Gate's experience. He was listening to Martin Luther's preface to Romans when he felt strangely warmed in his heart and a deep assurance that God had taken away all his sins and saved him. Some of you may have received that same assurance that you belong to God in different ways. Some of you may have received visions. Some of you may have just experienced a strange sense of peace coming over you while you prayed. For me, I've had both. And even now, I continue to experience the Holy Spirit giving me assurances in times of doubt. Assurances that the accusations of the devil has no power over me. This is God giving us countless evidence to give us confidence to hold on to this promise in Isaiah. From recorded history and scripture, to recorded accounts of church fathers, to our own experiences. God's promise to dwell with men is not just wishful thinking. We have this guarantee through the Holy Spirit and we can experience the presence of God with us through the Holy Spirit. If you have not had this experience as a Christian, this is something that we can boldly ask for because it's God's promise. We can boldly ask for the personal assurance that we belong to God and He dwells with us. So come to God, experience the fulfilling of his promise that he dwells with us. It's this very hope that you experience that will lead you to want to share the gospel with others because you know it's real. You know that God is with you. And this is the next promise he wants us to experience, the spreading of God's word by men. Interesting, right? Because this sounds more like a promise for us to keep than for God to keep. So how is this God's promise? Isaiah um, yeah, chapter 2, verse 2 says, All nations will stream to the mountain of the Lord, where God is. Usually we think of a stream flowing, being pulled by gravity from a higher level to a lower level, Right? But here, God is that center of gravity on the top of the mountain and people are attracted and drawn upwards towards Him. This is the second part of the promise that people will be drawn and attracted to God. Not because they are being pulled against their own will, but because God's goodness is so attractive to them that they even call others. Many peoples here refer to nations other than Israel so also known as Gentiles. So they're encouraging one another to come to this good thing that they have found. And we can see this being fulfilled in the life of the Apostle Paul. When he calls the Gentile Philippians partners in the gospel, the people who Paul was calling to follow him to come to Jesus, they are now partners with Paul in calling others to come to know Christ. We see this promise being fulfilled in history, how Christianity has spread from Jerusalem to so many nations. You know, and now there are missionaries from so many nations going out to everywhere. We can even see this promise being fulfilled in BPMC. It's probably how you came to know God yourself because someone told you about Him, even if it's your parents. And we are participating in this promise every time we share the gospel or even our own testimony with someone else. But now there's a very important detail. These people who are coming to God, they don't just want to learn about God's ways. 
It's learning for the purpose of walking in his paths. It's for living out his ways. And it is essential for us. The reason why we want to go to God is because we want to live differently. At this time now in our day and age, not everyone who comes to God sincerely desires to follow him and walk in his ways. Some people may just want a ticket to heaven, you know, with no intention of turning away from their own way of life. They still want to live however they want to. Some people want health and wealth, a life free from suffering, and they follow God's teaching only as a means to get what they want. Neither of these will be part of the promise in Isaiah 2. All those who are going to God sincerely desire to learn and walk in His ways. Do you desire to learn and walk in God's ways? If you do, then you must go to His Word. There is no other source. It is important that the source of the Word of the Lord is stated clearly from Jerusalem. There is only one way then for the Israelites to know God and learn His ways, and that is through the scriptures that they had, the law. And the only way for us to learn and walk in God's ways is also through the scriptures that we have, the Bible. When we come to seek God in His Word through the Bible, to let the Bible teach us and then apply it, then people will be able to tell that you are living differently. We may not be perfect, but when we live differently, people can tell this person's values have changed. This person is not like others. It's not like what he used to be. Perhaps you know of such people. Perhaps people have told you that yourself. It's through your own changed life that you will see people attracted to God to stream up that mountain. And this is what makes other people say, come let us go to God so that He will teach us His way so that we may walk in His paths. Someone shared with me that she came to Christ because she saw how a family member changed so much after becoming a Christian. So much that she picked up the Bible to read for herself. And when she prayed, she experienced such a sense of peace that washed over her. And today, she is a disciple of Christ. Just like that, one changed life leads to another. These countless evidences of people sincerely seeking to know God and live differently, the countless evidences of changed lives in yourself and others when we seek Him, these are all God letting us experience the fulfillment of His promise. How God's word is being spread by men to each other by their lives. When you come to God's word and let him teach you, learn his ways to live differently, he will let you experience the fulfillment of his promise of how God's word is being spread by one man to another through changed lives. I don't know if some of you might be wondering, see, I hear you, but I struggle to relate to that and find hope in that. Because what if I've been deeply hurt by the church or by other Christians? How do I make sense of this? If there have been people who have, here who have been hurt by other Christians before, I apologize. And while I hope that you will have a different experience with other Christians, I must also say that I cannot guarantee that you will never be hurt by other Christians. And conflicts won't arise until we are no longer in our sinful flesh. But despite this, God still offers us hope. This is the hope that there will be peace between men and we can experience that now. If we come to God, we will experience the fulfillment of this promise. Verse 4 talks about how when there are disputes, God himself will be the judge over it. People no longer take things into their own hands to make things right. There will be no more war where one attacks another. As difficult it may be to ever imagine world peace, there is hope beginning with God's people in the church. 
We can see this in the example of Stephen, who instead of retaliating, prayed for his enemies who were stoning him. He prayed, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. There are many persecuted Christians around the world who have since followed in Stephen's footsteps and are still following in their footsteps. Not that we all have to be martyrs to be part of this promise, but there are many ways for us to put down arms. One way is to put down grudges and extend forgiveness instead. This is Emma. 13 years into Emma's marriage, she found out that her husband had cheated on her. And she remembers this as the lowest point of her life. She then sought help of a Christian counsellor and through her guidance, Emma chose to forgive her husband, even though it was difficult. She was able to heal and her marriage with her husband was stronger afterwards. Three years later, she found out that her husband had cheated again. Just when she thought this was really the end, God spoke to Emma through his word that she have to forgive her husband, not just once, not twice, but every time, because that is the same forgiveness and unconditional love that God had given her. And though, hearing this, she cried to God, Lord, I cannot do this. But God softened her heart, miraculously, made her full of gentleness and love for her husband. And since then, Emma had been also an important bridge between her husband and her children. Emma was so thankful that she did not give up because she's able to see all the rewards that God has given her. For Emma, it was her decision to forgive that she received God's grace, not to turn against her husband, but turn towards him. It was her decision to forgive that brought peace, not just for herself, but also her husband and her children, her family. I know not many of you have cheating spouses to forgive, but it could be anyone who you seem to get hurt or offended by repeatedly. The one thing in Emma's story that really struck me was when she said, I have to forgive my husband not just once, not just twice, but every time. That is the same forgiveness and unconditional love that I have received. Forgiveness is telling God, God, you are the judge and right all the wrongs. And because, God, you say that the blood of Christ is sufficient to cover all sins, I will demand nothing else. And if the person who wronged me does not receive Christ's atonement for sin for himself or herself, then you will call him or her into account on the day of judgment. I no longer have to do anything or fight against anything. Still, it is not easy. Emma herself also cried out to God for help because she can't do it. But brothers and sisters, don't underestimate the power of God. Just as he changed Emma's heart, he can also change yours. God gives us the ability to forgive. And this is how he lets us experience the promise of peace between men. This is evidence for us that putting down arms is possible when God is the judge. It makes us hope for justice and peace among nations that is to come when he comes as the judge. Come to God and experience the fulfillment of his promise to bring peace to men. You know, I think Emma is really a living evidence of God's promises to us in Isaiah. The Holy Spirit dwelling within Emma gives her such deep assurance that God has forgiven all her sins, assurance of God's unconditional love for her. She simply obeyed God's word to forgive time and time again. Yet in a world that says, never forgive a cheater, he will always cheat again. She is spreading God's word by the way that she lives that is so different. 
And because the way that she lives is so different, people will also be attracted to God, to want to learn God's ways, because they can see that reconciliation, restoration is possible. It doesn't always have to end in division. She was a living evidence of how God's ways brought peace among them, among a family. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God's promises to us in Isaiah 2 is not just wishful thinking. God calls us to hope in His promise, not blindly, but with evidence so that we can stake our lives on it with confidence. We can see the evidence of His promise recorded in Scripture, throughout history, through testimonies of people, and He is inviting us to experience it for ourselves continually. The future is certain, and God is giving us evidence that it's already being fulfilled. It's just whether we want to be a part of it. And the only way to experience the fulfilling of God's promises is to come to God. To come to God and ask Him for the deep assurance that you are marked by Him, which comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within you. To come to God and let Him teach you His ways to live differently so that people want to know God's Word by the way that you live. To come to God to receive the forgiveness of Christ so that you can extend the same forgiveness and experience peace with men. This is God's gift to us, to last the waiting until we see the ultimate fulfillment of His promises. Until then, He continually works in us to let us know that our hope is not blind faith, but is backed with countless and endless evidences. This hope is sure and certain, and we can stake our lives upon it. And so I use the words of Isaiah 2 verse 5 to ask for your response. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. What is your response to these words? Let us now bow our heads and just take a moment to reflect. Which do you desire to experience most deeply in this season of your life? Is it the assurance that you belong to God, being marked by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Or do you wish to live out God's word and experience a changed life? Or do you wish to experience the peace that comes from forgiveness? Which do you desire to experience most deeply in this season of your life? God is now here in our midst. Turn to Him now and express the desire of your heart. Let us take a moment to pray. God of hope, giver of good gifts. Our hearts desire the, the Spirit testifying with our own spirit that we are your children. Our hearts desire to be taught by your word so that we may walk in your ways and live differently. Our hearts desire to forgive just as you have forgiven us. And we acknowledge, Lord, that all this is only possible by you and there's nothing we can do by our own efforts. And so, Lord, we come to you with our sincere pleas and await with certain hope for you to come to us in our weakness and let us experience the fulfillment of your promises in our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For those of you who responded, we would love to pray with you personally as well and continue journeying together with you. And if that's something you would like, do let us know via the QR code that will be put up at the end of the service. 
Shall we stand and respond to God with a song of response? We have our hope. The law of the Lord is perfect. Making wise the simple, more to be desired are they than gold, yet than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. The statues of the Lord are right. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, and enlightening the eyes, more to be Today we dedicate the following people, uh, the English Works Committee members before the Lord and also the committee members that serve. So I'm going to invite Slitin in the house. to come and read the names of our English Works Committee members. When your names are read, could you please come on stage? English, um, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Mike can move on. I present to you the English Works Committee 2023, the pastor in charge, English Congregational Pastor, Reverend Dek Yong Dek, Associate Pastor, Reverend Eric Tan, Thy Colonel Minister Attachment, Reverend Dr. Andrew Pei, is preaching at the Paya Lebar Methodist Church preaching point this morning. The chairperson of this committee is Mr. Vincent Chua. Lay leader, Ms. Karen Lowe. Associate Lay Leader, Ms. Amy Go. English Worship Service Committee, Mr. Chi Jin Wen. Worship and Music Team Head, Ms. Frances Teo. Audio, visual, and lights team head, Mr. William Wong, is not able to be with us today. Operations team head, Mr. George Tan. WOW committee chairperson, Mr. Chia Wee Tech, who is with the WOW now. 
Cell Group Ministry Head, Ms. Yun Yu Ting, Seniors Ministry Head, Dr. Stephen Yeo, Men's Ministry Head, Mr. Vincent Chua, Ladies Ministry Head, Ms. Tu Mei Yong, Young Adults Ministry Head, Mr. Daniel Sia, Young Adults Ministry Co-Head, Ms. Melissa T, who is also not able to be with us today. Sunday School Head, Ms. Lin Tan Ling Na, Prayer Ministry Head, Reverend Lik Yong Tik, Outreach and Social Concerns Committee Chairperson, Church Level, Mr. Thomas Das, Tapas Das, Discipleship and Nurture Committee Chairperson, Church Level, Ms. Lin Lai Wa, Finance Committee Chairperson, Church Level, Ms. Amy Go, Lay Ministry, Ministry Staff, Ms. Wong Si Yu, and Ms. Marilyn She Eng, who is also with the WOW now, and media producer, Ms. Ngo Jia Rou. Thank you very much, Lee Tin. Can I just make a comment? Uh, some of these positions at the church level, we have asked them to join us at the EWC to be members, to give wisdom as well. So some of these that you see at the church level, uh, but yet they are also with us in the English Works Committee. Can I ask that all the committee members turn and face the front here as we... Church, when, when we do this, it's very frightening to have people behind you, huh? So all the leaders stand here. It's very frightening to have people behind because you can't see what people are doing behind. But leaders lead. Leaders don't chase. And as we lead as leaders, we ask that you pray for us so that as leaders, when we lead, you see us in action. Pray that we will do well. Pray that our lives will be right because when we lead, we are the first ones. So we pray and ask that you would help us to do well as well. Dear co-workers, and I say this with celebration, not start yet. I know Chinese New Year coming, but Singapore don't allow firecracker. Leaders, I say this with much love and much pain and much surrender as well, that as leaders, when we do this, we are called by God, chosen by God, but yet our lives are asked, we are asked to lead it in a particular way. And I pray that as we answer the Lord, Holy Spirit will empower us. Co-workers, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. Each ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts, calls you to work in partnership with God among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligations and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to this congregation, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ, make him known in your witness and in your work. As I ask you these questions, would you respond? Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will he be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the church and in the world? I will with God's help. Will you so live that you are an example to the community of what it means to belong to Christ? I will with God's help. Will you do all in your power to be faithful in the task for which you have been chosen? I will with God's help. Let us pray together. Lord, we anoint these leaders. They come to you not for fame or fortune, but Lord, in the surrender of their lives as they lay it at the cross. Lord, would you bring a renewed resurrection into their lives so that they would know that when they serve you, Lord, that which touches human, physical, and spiritual will be seen by the people around us. 
Your call for us is not to maintain a particular job or role. Your call for us is to bring the poor, the needy, the downtrodden, the desperate, and to bring them to the cross of Jesus Christ. If that be our role, then Lord, would you help us to be found at the cross of Jesus Christ. Bring a renewal, Lord, to your leaders. Bring a change, Lord, to your leaders so that, Lord, they stand not just as operational people, but they stand, Lord, as shepherds. They stand, Lord, as people who watch others. So anoint them, Holy Spirit, I pray. Put your power upon them. Put your words upon them. Put the supernatural upon them so that they could live their lives fully, Lord, for you. And Lord, when we fail, when we stumble, would we come back to the cross and find you, the one who forgives us, that we may forgive as well. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' most precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I invite you to face the con congregation? Can I ask that you stand? There is a response. Your response is simple. The model answer is we will with God's help. Let me ask you this question, members of the congregation, community of faith at Bukit Panjang Methodist Church, rejoice that God provides laborers for the vineyards. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage them in the responsibilities to which they have been called, giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers. Let's do it together again with our full gusto. We will, with God's help. Thank you so much. I feel the reverberation behind. I ask that the leaders remain uh, where they are facing the congregation. I would like to invite the congregation to their seats. Now we are going to dedicate all of the ministry teams, the ministry uh, people, the hands and feet that are a part of this community and to uh, serve together with us as leaders. So I'm addressing to all of us gathered here today. Dear friends, Today, let us encourage and dedicate those who shoulder the various tasks in the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I call your ministries, please stand wherever you are, those who are in those ministries. Firstly, our worship leaders, including our backing vocals, our support vocalists. Yeah, you may stand where you are, worship leaders. Okay, I see them. All right. Our musicians, the choir, our lectors, those who read scripture, our ushers, the audiovisual and lights team, including the projectionist and also our broadcast uh, crew, Holy Communion stewards, our sacristans, flower arrangement team, our tellers those who uh, count the uh, offering and uh, photographers, prayer ministry people, Sunday school people, Sunday school ministry, I beg your pardon, cell group ministry, ladies ministry, men's ministry, seniors ministry and young adults ministry, visitation ministry and the befrienders ministry. Please stand wherever you are. Together with the leaders, I'm going to be asking you all some questions as well, and I ask that you would respond accordingly. Will you seek the Lord first, that you may depend on Him to uphold you in these ministries? Will you endeavor to develop your gifts so that you offer your best to the Lord? Will you be faithful to the task? taking seriously the commitments of time and talent? 
Will you endeavour to serve in unity, giving each other your fullest cooperation, especially when the ministries overlap and are intertwined? So the rest of the congregation who are seated, I'm addressing you now. There is also an appropriate response. You know who you are. If you are seated, I ask that you stand together with all those who are already standing and respond accordingly. Dear brothers and sisters, I commend these persons to you. They are in your midst. The various ministries in the church have been given to them. Will you sustain them with your encouragement and your prayers? We recognize this day as persons who have been called to serve in our midst and dedicate you to serve in His name. We pledge ourselves to pray for you, to enable, encourage and love you in these ministries. May God richly bless your labours of love. Praise the Lord. As we remain standing, there is this prayer. Congregation, I invite you to join with me in prayer for these persons as they stand to present themselves for this, His work this year, to pray the blessing of God and this community upon their endeavours. Let us pray together. Eternal, Eternal God, God, we call all who believe in you into your service and promise grace and strength for the fulfilling of your will. Bless these men and women who have been called, have offered themselves for this office within your church. Lead them to deeper knowledge of you. Give them diligence and faithfulness in their study of your word tenderness and patience with all whom they serve, and sincerity, singleness of mind, and humility as they accept the responsibilities laid upon them. Help them and us to follow in Christ's path and be a light both in this place and to the world. We ask this in the name of the head of the church, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us give God our worship and praise the Lord. Thank you very much, leaders. You may take your seats. You may all take your seats. We now move into our tithes and offering. As we respond to the Lord, if you have not caught the QR codes earlier, these are the two QR codes that are available for us to do our e-giving. On your left is for the general fund. On your left, correct. On your left is for the general fund and on the right is for the missions fund. And again, can I just take this opportunity that if you do this download once and you save it in your phone, you can do it all the time. You don't have to keep taking the picture of the QR code. We are also saving time, so as I invite the ushers to bring the offering boxes up, let us all stand together. Before you sit down, could I introduce some guests and visitors who are with us this morning? And will we give them a huge welcome? Uh, Simon and Sally is here, uh, right there on my right, uh, where Brad is. We want to welcome you to Bukit Panjang Methodist Church. 
Mina is also here. Mina is here. Wave at me. Someone pretend to be Mina, wave at me. <laughs> okay. Um, the, uh, and we also have Susie, um, who is here with us this morning. We want to thank you. Welcome you. Uh, we just baptized a brother last Friday. We want to welcome her to our community. Did I not call your name if you are new with us? Have not. Okay, don't have. Could you turn to your... Oh, why is Karen waving? Yeah, that one, Karen Koo, not new. Anyone else? No, okay. Could you turn to your neighbor and just say hi? And then from your hi, can you just catch up? Remember that we want to catch up later on during refreshments. Please take your seats once you have done that. Okay, let's look at our announcements this morning. Welcome. Today, refreshments at a different place. Uh, it is no, not at the San Francis Hall that you usually do, so now it is upstairs at the terrace. If you go from this side, you turn left, same way, but halfway before the hall, there's a flight of staircase. You go up that staircase, one floor, one flight of stairs, and then you are there uh, at the terrace. Okay? Uh, if you're going by the back, um, the, the, the back backstage, the back entrance, you take the lift to first floor, and then you are there. All right? So, um, be nice to each other because everyone is quite lost, I think, in a new place. Those of you who have been us for years and years and years, it's like going back to the good old days. Lah, huh? um, terrace is where the refreshments are. So if you are here with us as newcomers, if you have been with us for a few weeks, a few months also can, as long as you do not know where to go, uh, please find yourself at the welcome table. All right? The welcome table, by its na the nature of the name, is welcome. So you must feel welcome there, all right? Um, okay, next one. Slide. Thanksgiving, uh, Bukit Panjang Methodist Church Kindergarten, our 37th graduation. There's a whole long list of things to give thanks for. You can go back, read, and then in your quiet time, you can give thanks to the Lord. We thank God for allowing us to have this kindergarten. Can I just say, church members, kindergarten is the place where many people come because of the quality of the kindergarten. And our response is, we also give you blessedness. We come and we share God's word with them. We relate to the parents. There are many opportunities for us to reach out to them to share God's love. All right? So that, that kindergarten is at our doorstep. Um, next one is uh, Holy Communion on site only next week, 4th of December. Please remember, this is our Holy Communion service. We do consecration on-site. You should know by now, there is no online Holy Communion. All right, so please come and join us on-site. Uh, for homebound members, if you cannot make it because you are unable, you are not mobile, we will bring the Holy Communion to you. Okay? Special worship services, um, 18 December is our English Combined for Baptism Confirmation Membership. And then on the 25th December, it's also a Sunday. Um, please note that that Sunday morning, our service is at 10 o'clock. All right, uh, let me explain to you the, the, the toggling. Our normal service, 9 o'clock, correct? But then it's Christmas Day. So what do you all do normally on Christmas Eve? You eat and go into food coma. So we were toggling between keep it back at Sunday and see probably people staggering in in the morning or make it at Sunday. So we made it at, at uh, not Sunday, made it at 10. We made it at 10 for you to invite your friends that you can stagger in together at 10. Ken? So it's an evangelistic service on that day. Invite your friends. There are people who are very open uh, during Christmas to say that, okay, la, panchan you, la, you've been asking me the whole year. This one time I go to church with you. Or... You have never asked them to come to church. You ask them to come to church on Christmas Day. They say, yeah, that sounds correct. Okay, so could you please start to invite? There is an e-card e that is going out soon. I think it's with us already, done already. Not yet, heaven give. Today give. Not, not yet. Oh my gosh, she's still sign language. Oh, I don't understand. Uh, but we have designed an e-card for you to invite your friends and etc, etc. So please invite your friends to come for the Evangelistic Sunday, Christmas Day. And then on the 31st December, the last day of this year, physical year, we will have our watch night service. All right. Uh, oh, there you go. The, okay. 
Oh, is that what you meant after the next slide? The Christmas Day worship service. This is the slide. Invite your friends. Come to us at 10 o'clock. Next one. God became flesh and walked with us is the theme for that day. All right? Um, are you one of these folks? Please come and join the team. For those of you who recognize when we serve, there are many people who serve, but we need more people. Uh, more people because there's so much more to do. And you know that every Sunday, this whole setup that's happening uh, requires quite a bit of manpower. And we'd like to invite you if you are... Um, if you can run magic on keyboards, if you can do uh, riffs uh, like CK on the strings, if you can do the, the drums, the, the, the voice, uh, if you, you can do befriending, have a good smile, smile really people soon, uh, you know. Um, if you have creative person in you to do the PowerPoint so that, you know, when we watch this, see someone created this, just so, so wonderful. If you have ears for music, not just music, sound, uh, all right, if you have ears for sound, because sound people, uh, AV is not just technical, it is sound, it's hearing, and then you can do the lights. And you, actually, uh, can you realize that we have been improving? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Do, you. do you realize that we now use lights, we switch off lights, we try to create, you know, then got, oh, everything very good. Lah. And this is the team that has been working very, very hard, uh, and, and they've been working to do well. So would you, if you are available, not if you are available, sorry, I, I'm sorry. I never believe that church people are called volunteers. They are people called by God. Okay, so you open your heart and say, God, I want to serve, and the Lord calls you to it. Please come and join us, do your best. Who do they contact? Ghostbusters. Okay. <laughs> Youth Camp um, Jubilee is on, uh, first time after three years. 27 to the 30th, uh, and it is a stay in camp, okay? BBGB campsite. Um, uh, it's not an overnight camp, it's a stay in camp. Uh, huh? um, yeah, because you don't just do one night overnight, uh, you stay in. Uh, please register, QR codes there. If you know of people, youth uh, running around your neighborhood, don't know what to do, can you ask them to come for, for camp, okay? If they got no money, can you please pay for them and then come for camp? All right. Any questions, ask Marilyn. Next one, um, there's a letter from our pastor in charge. We are charging you for... No, we're not. Um, it's time again for us to, to write our pledges. Uh, if you refer to the letter, I've, I said to you that there are two things in response to God. One is our tithe that we give, and tithe is just a 10% that the Lord... Whatever the Lord gives to me, I give 10%. All right, that is the, the, the command of the Old Testament that is given to us. We continue to practice that. The second response is that sometimes God calls us and says, look, can you see the need? And beyond our 10%, we give to the Lord because that's how the Lord is with us. And as the, the Lord calls us, as we give to the Lord, the Lord always takes care of us. All right, so now, what to do? If you want to pledge uh, and you want to do an e-pledging, just um, do it every, every month, lah, huh? Uh, but if you need a number, and how the church is run is that we, we actually issue each person a number so that you can also keep track. You can use a hard copy, so register, and drop it into our offering, uh, offering box. It's now up here. <laughs> Next week, you can put it in, in an offering box, and then, you just, uh, have, and then we will send you the envelopes to remind you every month. You just put your, your, your tithing into that envelope and drop it into the offering box or offering bag. Okay. If not, you will fill up the online form indicating your pledge. Now, why do we pledge? We pledge two things. One is to tell the church that this is my commitment to the Lord. Please know this. Number two, it is for ourselves to know that every month I must do this. All right. So it's a twofold thing for us. Okay. We will talk more about this somewhere within the year. Next one. Praise the Lord. Our response code is here. If you have, if you, again, the Lord has spoken to you, touched you this morning for you to respond. I, I just want to say one word before I give you the benediction. While CE is not loud and in your face, today's message is actually a very hard message for us. If you have listened carefully, it is really a message that is very key you know, there's only one alphabet different from the word home and the word hope. One alphabet. But if you cannot find hope in your home, that's major. 
And I want to bring this call to all of us as we, as we close today's service. If the Lord is not found in your home, in your heart, it's very hard for us. Life is very difficult. Can you think about the people who do not have Christ at home? They need God. They need God desperately. Would we be a people that will reach out to them? Shall we all stand together? Would you receive God's blessing and hope? Be a people of hope. Let hope live in your heart. Share the hope of Christ with all you meet. Share hope by noticing someone else's humanity. Share hope by listening to someone else's story. Share hope by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share hope. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, would you share hope with those you meet? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.